Hi folks, here is a message from a user called The Truth Seeker. Hello Daryl, I admire your work and you're one of the few people that I've met that is open-minded and actually searches for the truth. Thank you. I haven't watched all your videos, but in the ones I have seen, I haven't heard you talk much about the afterlife. What are your thoughts on the possibilities of what could happen after you die? And which one do you think is most likely to be? Thanks for your time. Yeah, I did make a video about the afterlife a long, long time ago, but I think that was like four years ago. Um, <clears throat> there's a video called Time and Eternity, if you want to look that up. But let's, let's talk about it. Um, when someone says to me, do you believe there's life after death? If I answer that with no, That's not really true. <laughs> That's not really what I believe. But if I answer it with yes, ah, that's not really true either. And I'm not just trying to be abstract for the sake of being abstract. Um, I have a way of looking at the universe that renders the question obsolete. And I'll try my best to explain what I mean by that. Some things, first of all, for you to think about regarding the idea of the afterlife, just some thoughts for you to roll around in your head. And I think when you, when you contemplate these, you'll start to formulate your own opinion and it'll probably end up being something close to mine. The first thing we need to realize as the, is that people believe in the afterlife because they don't want to die because they're very attached to their identity and they want that identity to continue forever. And I tend to think that's, that impulse is really nothing more than a, a survival impulse of, of the organism. We're built to want to live generally and it takes, it takes an awful lot to really get us to, to want to end it, to commit suicide. But um, What I want you to think about in relation to the afterlife is, okay, let's say you could take your identity and carry it past the grave to some experience or other, who knows what. What would it be like to accumulate memories for an existence that continued on and on for a trillion, 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 trillion years? And continued on past that again. So try to imagine yourself in a trillion, 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 trillion years time. And think about that tiny little portion of years that was your earthly existence. Half of which you couldn't even remember when you were alive, right? So think about that perspective. Now here's the thing. I'm trying to make this identity survive death. But if I think back to when I was three years old, I know that I was alive as a three-year-old. I know that I was doing things, um, making memories, but all of those memories are gone. My earliest memory is I think my first day of school when I was five years old. Um, there's only a handful of memories I've got from when I was five years old. And there's not an awful lot of memories exist between five and ten. There's just fragments here and there. Um, but three years old, can't remember a thing. And yet that three-year-old was alive. That three-year-old had an identity. But that identity is gone. So in other words, it wasn't meant to be permanent. It was meant to change into something else. And the change was so profound that me now is barely recognizable as the three-year-old me, except a couple of similarities in, in photographs. So here's the thing. I have an identity now and I want to make this identity permanent. But if the three-year-old identity wasn't permanent, what's so permanent about this one? Clearly it's not meant to be permanent. I could live till I am 80 years old, possibly, and I will only have fragments of memory from when I was 41. That's now. 
So, um, there's nothing here to hold on to. I could be 80 years old and have Alzheimer's and have this identity then would be like almost totally gone, scrambled, <laughs> scrambled egg identity <laughs> when I'm 80. Um, so what am I going to do? Am I going to take a, a, a scrambled egg soul with me into the afterlife? <laughs> um, you see the difficulty with, with this afterlife idea? We invent it, and we literally do invent it out of thin air because we don't like the thought of our life ending. Um, and yet if we really examined our life, we would see that nothing about it has any permanence, even while you're living it. You only hold on to the memories that you deem memorable. You forget all the rest. And the personality that you have, that you really think of as your identity, that is continually changing as you go through life. I am nothing like I was when I was 17. Bits and pieces of me are the same, but I was naive back then in a way that I'm not now. Um, I'm just not the same person. If you transplanted me now into that 17 year old body, my friends at the time, they'd be all, Charles, you're really, you're really different. It's like you're possessed. You're like not the same person at all. So what is the thing? What is the constant that we are trying to identify and to take past this life beyond death? There isn't one. Now we use the word soul sometimes, or even the word consciousness if you want, as a kind of constant that can go somewhere. But when you disconnect that from memory and personality, from this changeable thing, then the word soul ceases to have any meaning. So even if you wanted to cling to views like reincarnation, um, the reincarnated being has no memory of the previous incarnation. So why even conceptualize something, some weird ephemeral thing that jumps out of one body and goes floating around and jumps into a new life? Why even conceptualize that? Because it's not you in any meaningful sense. Because the thing that I'm attached to is not some strange globule that is the real me. The thing that I'm attached to is this personality. These memories that I have. But they die. The personality is brain based. Because different brain chemistry gives rise to a different personality. The hormonal balance that is different between men and women give rise to different personality traits. Children Teenagers, they have very different personalities than adults because of their hormones. Um, so who you are is a chemical thing, and chemicals are physical things. So it seems you're stuck. You're stuck in the physical realm, and you belong here. And the stuff that you are made of is physical stuff. Even memories, I mean, if you poke the brain in a certain way, you can mess with people's memories. So it's all physical, all this stuff. Um, I don't see how you can take it with you into an afterlife. Unless you want to invent some elaborate theory about there being some kind of astral body that has a copy of the physical body that can go on. You know, but come on. That's really getting into wishful thinking territory. All the evidence suggests that... Um, the brain and the mind are inseparable and that your personality and your memory are dictated by physical measurable qualities. So there's nothing left to go anywhere after death. So that almost sounds like I'm saying there's no afterlife, but that's not what I believe because I have a view that the universe is one. So the thing that is the constant is just consciousness. Not my consciousness, but just consciousness itself. 
It's not that there's a thing inhabiting all these different bodies, or rather, different things inhabiting different bodies. It's just that the universe is focused into a multitude of different points that experience individuality. So, we need to talk about that in more detail, but I have in other videos. Um, what I'm really saying is, you are the universe. You are not an isolate unit of consciousness. That's just the manifestation, not the reality. Think of the reality underneath the manifestation. That's the real you. Um, so in other words, and Brian Lake, coincidentally, uh, the user I'm you and you're me, he was making a video about this very thing that I'm talking about, this, this thing that you can't actually commit suicide. <laughs> because... If the whole universe is you, when one little focal point commits suicide, well, all the other focal points are still alive, aren't they? And they're all you. So my idea of the afterlife is that I am alive in every conscious creature, past, present, and future, in every succession of universes, from big bang to big crunch, on and on we go, the whole thing is you because the universe is one it is not dual even in science you know we talk about a non-local universe when you get into fundamental particles you know like the electron and everything um, under certain observable contexts like the double slit experiment the electron ceases to be a particle it exists all over the universe at the same time <laughs> so um, you are it so I don't need an afterlife I suddenly realize that um, I don't need to indulge in this wishful thinking that there is an afterlife because I'm everything okay I can't access that from this particular focal point from this particular body but I know that I'm everything and here's the thing also, you know, we were talking about trillions and trillions of years. Imagine what it would be like to accumulate memories for trillions and trillions of years. Would that not actually become quite a burden to carry all that? And some of us have things we'd rather, we'd rather forget but can't. Where does that come into the picture? There's actually something very, very freeing about the thought that death wipes the slate clean. That the end of this organism is really just the beginning of another one because there's going to be new life. Now, I don't have any children, but if I did have children, you know, in a sense, they're an extension of me. They're my replacement and I get to still be alive for a while being a caretaker of them as they grow up, but they, they start with this clean slate and they're you. In fact, they even look like you. The child looks like the parent, genetically. So, death is really like a reboot. And yes, you know, death is really, it's the way I like to put it is like, Death is just a break in the continuity of consciousness where a personality and a set of memories are snatched from you a little bit sooner than you'd like to let go of them. Because if you could live for another 400 years, you would have let go of them. Because your personality would have changed and your memories, most of them would have been forgotten. So you would have let go of them. But death is just, it takes it from you before you're ready to let go of them. It has no more horror than that. Something is snatched from you that was never permanent anyway. You get me? But to really wrap your head around this stuff, you've got to see through the illusion of this made up thing called the soul. That isn't anything. We just make it up. Um, it's not real. 
no reason to think of it as real. So, um, you know, I am very attached to who I am. I'm very attached to my memories. That's just natural. But when I look at a child playing, especially a young child, just looking around at the world with new eyes and everything's fresh and, oh, let me look at that there, let me play with that. That child is experiencing something that I can never experience because I am burdened by experience and memory. The more you experience, the less exciting life can become because you've experienced so much of it already. So isn't it a breath of fresh air that consciousness wipes the slate clean, starts again, and starts having fun all over again? So the true afterlife is simply the next generation. Simple as that. We don't have to invent another plane of existence that we go to. We don't have to sweep away the entire universe so we can believe in heaven. You know, <laughs> that's mad when you really think about it. Look at how big the universe is. And Christians and other religions, oh, we just want to forget all about that and go to this other place. <laughs> no, I, if, if this is about anything, it has to be about here. Because it's so darn big. <laughs> when I used to believe in no afterlife, it used to really depress me. This is back when I was an atheist. But um, technically, I don't really believe in an afterlife. You know, it's more true to say I don't believe in an afterlife than it is to say I do. But the perspective that I have on it now totally takes away the darkness, completely, and is even better than the idea of a soul lifting off a body and traveling on and going to heaven where it praises God forever or some other boring sounding thing like that, you know? Um, so the perspective I have on it is totally in keeping with the scientific evidence about consciousness and it's completely rational and it's perfectly fulfilling as well. That doesn't mean death won't be scary because the organism will do everything in its power to stay alive. And again, that's just all part of the game of life.